Hello, my name's Aaron from Geek Lemme Development and welcome to our Xcode tutorials. Now in this tutorial, we're gonna be adding in AdMob interstitial ads within our application. Now, just before we get into it, I'd just like to make you aware we are continuing on from our previous tutorial where we added in AdMob banners within to our app. We're also gonna be using the same project that we created within that tutorial. So if you're watching this one for the first time, I suggest you go back, check out that tutorial as there'll be an annotation on the screen right now, as that tutorial gives us all the fundamentals to creating and setting up our application to be able to call and retrieve AdMob ads within our application. So what interstitial ads are is a more full screen effect of an advert that we can display within the app. And we can call them at any given time. For example, if our user has just finished playing a level within our game, we can then call it in an interstitial ad, which will then load up full screen within our application. Now, there's three kind of variations of an interstitial ad that we can display. There's text, there's image, and there's video. Now, interstitial ads have a much higher revenue share to the banners that we will receive, so you earn a slightly more, a uh, little bit more money from those over normal banners. So let's jump straight into our tutorial and add these ads into our application. Okay then, so we're continuing from where we left off in our previous tutorial on displaying AdMob banners within our app. So as you can see here, we have this project set up and this application all set up with our AdMob being displayed within it. Now, if you're watching this tutorial for the first time, I do suggest you go back and watch our previous one on displaying AdMob banners where we set up AdMobs and all the frameworks within our project to give us the ability to run it. So if you're familiar with AdMob, that's great, we can continue with this, but if you're doing it for the first time, I do suggest going back and viewing that tutorial. So what we're gonna be doing in this one is displaying interstitial ads within our application. Now, what these are is basically full screen ads. And you may have seen them in various applications. And how we display those is we have to trigger them. They're very different for the basically from the banners that just appear within our app. We can trigger these at any given time. Now, if you've seen these before, you would have noticed if you played a game, maybe you got to the end of a level, then all of a sudden an ad pops up. Maybe you're about to go watch a video with an application but before you can, an ad pops up. And those full screen ads are the interstitial ones that we're gonna be adding within our projects today. So, again, continuing from our previous tutorial on adding ad mob banners, you would see that we have all the frameworks added in that we need, and we have our Google mobile ads framework added in, and our meditation adapters. Now, again, if it's the first time you're seeing this, I do suggest going back so you can set up your application and make sure it is displaying ad mob banners within it. So this project is pre-configured to display ad mob banners. And we're gonna be using what we added in our last lecture to then continue and focus on these interstitial ads and add those in. So we're first gonna start by going to ad mob. Now, this is my profile we set up for our previous tutorial for our banner. Now, we're going to add in a new ad unit. Now, the reason we're doing this is because our interstitial ad is very different from our banner. So, we need to have two separate ads. And by doing this means we'll have two different reports in the same application for the revenue. So, you can see if your interstitial ads is performing better than your banner ads or vice versa. So, we select interstitial. And then the ad type, you can choose between text, image, or video. Now I suggest togging all of these uh, to get maximum revenue, as you simply have a text one, which displays text, very much like the banners, uh, or a full screen image, or maybe even a video. The videos and the images earn more revenue than a simple text one. But don't think, oh, okay, I'll just simply select video and image and untick term text. Please don't do that. Make sure you have them all selected because even though you earn more revenue from video and images, they're less likely to appear in the application because again, they earn more revenue. So make sure you got all three of them so you can cover all basis for displaying an ad. Then you have this frequency capping 
which you can choose how often it displays to our user. Now, by default, it's selected to no cap on impressions. Now, if your application is, you've got this keep triggering over and over again, keep displaying ads to your user. One, yeah, that may be slightly annoying to your user, but also you can cap it. So maybe you only want to display five ads to them within the course of an hour. And again, you can do that by simply changing up how it all works. But we're gonna keep it on default. And I'll simply give this a, a name now. So this, again, this is simply for our own reference anyway. So I'll call the um, last one banner. I'm gonna call this, this one full screen banner and then save that and add that in. And just like our previous ad banner, it gives us an ad unit ID, which we'll hold on to that just for a little bit later. So back within our application, how these interstitial ads appear is they get triggered. They're not like our banners, they just automatically appear. We trigger them at any given point in the application. Now, for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm gonna get it to simply be triggered by me pressing a button. But you could have it set up anyway. If you had a game, once your user reaches a checkpoint maybe, display an ad. If they complete a level, display an ad. If they're about to watch a video, display an ad. You can trigger it anytime you want. So I'm gonna close this folder up here and jump into our main.storyboard. And you see our banner at the bottom there. And all I'm gonna do now is add in a simple button uh, just so we can trigger the ad to display. So I'll just show me the ad exclamation mark. And then we bring up our assistant editor. I'm gonna add this button now as an action. And I'll call it show ad, there we go. Now again, this is just the purpose of um, displaying this ad so I can get it to trigger. So back within our view controller.swift. Now, it's quite smart on how we get this to work. So you can see all the previous code set up here to display our ad mob banner. Now in the view did load is where we start the process of displaying this interstitial ad. So when the view loads up, we are simply gonna preload, pre-configure, pre-basically set up this ad ready to be displayed. It's not until we press the button that we trigger it to pop up. This is so it gives us, or basically our application, the ability to find an ad, get it ready, and it's just sitting in the background getting ready to display it to our user. Rather than your user going to do something, you triggering to display the ad and then, ah, oh, there isn't one to show. So at least for those few seconds before, we was able to find one and display it. So once the view loads up, we're gonna get our interstitial ad and get it to basically load a request. Now, because this is not like our previous banner, we can't load it up within anything. So we have to create our very own variable. So we create our variable here, and I'm simply gonna call it interstitial now. I'm making sure I spell it right, because it's, it's one thing spelling it, but it's another thing trying to say the word. It's, it's quite difficult at times. So this is gonna be our GAD interstitial. There we go. Add that exclamation mark there. We've added that in. So now we can reference it within our project. So interstitial here, we add that in now. And that's gonna equal our GAD interstitial. We do our bracket here, our add unit ID. And then that's simply gonna be linked to a string with our kind of um, interstitial add unit ID in between the two quotation marks, just like our banner ad. So back within AdMob, as we got that add unit ID all set up, this is simply gonna copy it and then paste it in. So again, when it calls one, it's calling it from our own profile, our own account, meaning we get all the money when one displays up. There we go. So that simply is all it's linked to is the add unit ID there. We're now gonna set up a request. So we have to create a variable, so we create our let within our view did load. And we simply call this our request. And that's gonna equal a, GD, a GAD request. There we go there. And what that's gonna be linked to is our interstitial. There we go. I almost said it wrong. To load a request of our request. There we go. So all that's simply done is requested an ad to load up. So if it's got one, it's waiting in the wings, it's just waiting in the background waiting in the background to be called upon at any given time. So it's preloaded, which is what we want. 
So it's not until then it gets triggered and how we're triggering it is by pressing a button. So you could set this up anywhere else. So if you want it to trigger, let's say when your user finishes watching or watches a video or finishes a level, what the code we now place within this button is the code that triggers it. So again, wherever you want it to get triggered, place this code where you want it. So we first have to get an if statement because we need to check if there is an ad available. There's no point trying to show an ad if it doesn't exist. So if bracket our interstitial is ready, so if it's ready, meaning if it's got an ad sitting there, then it can perform to display it to our user. So our interstitial dot present from root view controller in the highlight section here, we simply do self. So that then gets that preloaded ad and then once triggered, presents it to our user. Now, even though this is gonna work, this will load up the ad, we're not quite finished. So what we're gonna do is quickly go and test it out. So just like in the previous tutorial, we got to a certain point and we could display the ad, but we weren't quite finished because we need to know how to handle it. Now, once it's loaded up, so hopefully once the view loads then, it's got an ad waiting for us. You can see our banner at the bottom will work in now. So we press show me the ad and then it displays it to our user. So it's been triggered. It already preloaded when the view loaded up and now it's been displayed to our user. So our user gets this. Again, it could have been the choice between text and image or a video. Uh, we've got the image. And then once they're finished with it, they can either click on it, uh, earn us some revenue or we get some revenue just from it being displayed. And then they press X and it goes back to the application. Now, like I said before, uh, we're not quite finished there. Even though it displays it to our users, we're not finished. Now, like in our previous uh, tutorial on our banners, where we got to a certain point and was able to basically display it, but we weren't quite finished because we needed to know how to handle the ad within the application. So at this given point now, if I press the button, nothing happens again now. So we've displayed the ad, and we go to press it again to display another ad, but it won't do it. And that's because when the view loaded up, it got an ad ready for us and placed it within a queue. Once it's displayed by pressing our button, that's it. There's nothing else left in the queue. So what we need to do now then is once we've displayed our ad, we need to set it up. So once it displays it, it goes and finds another one and places it in the queue. So every time it displays an ad, it adds another one to the queue displays the ad, then adds another one to the queue. So that way we can keep refreshing and keep displaying these interstitial ads into our application. So how we do this then, we jump back into our project now. And I'll just space it out down below so we can got a bit of room, we can see what we're doing. So once it calls to present it to our user, uh, we then want it to basically set up and kind of create a new ad uh, ready to be displayed again. So we're going to create first a function statement. So this function statement we're going to create is going to be triggered when we display our ad to our user to then get an ad and place it in the queue. So we type out function and I'll simply call it create ad. There we go there, put the two brackets at the end. And that's going to be linked GAD interstitial. There we go and create our bracket there. So in this function statement, it's going to simply do what the view did load does. So it's going to get our ad here and then load it up. But because it's within a function statement, we need to create it as a variable. So we get our let and we'll call it uh, just like we did before our interstitial here. And that's going to equal our GE, uh, GAD interstitial again, bracket add unit ID. Now the add unit ID again is the same of what we added just above here, as we call it from the same place. Uh, once it's got that add unit ID there, it's gonna get our interstitial once more, then load a request just like it does up above. And it's gonna load our request of our GAD uh, request. We've got two brackets there, there we go. But we need to make sure that we then return it. So return our interstitial there. So we're going to call this function statement once we've displayed our ad. So just after where we display it, we um, kind of present it to our view controller there. We're then going to simply get our interstitial 
to then equal our create ad. So then I will create a new ad to get ready in place to display. So if we go to build and run now, see once it loads up, we then press show me the ad, displays it to our users, and then when we press exit, show me the ad once more, again it has a second one to display. Now even though it's the same one, it's not showing the same one, so don't worry, it's just the one that's happening to be displayed uh, at the moment. But you can see how it keeps requesting and gets a second one in the queue. Now we can keep showing ads to our users, it keeps refreshing and places it in a new queue to display one after the other. So there we go then, we've covered now both topics from simple ad mob banners to uh, interstitial ads within the application. So make sure you watch both of the videos, this one and the previous one, and integrate them into your application as it's multiple ways on how you can earn revenue from your apps. So there we have it. We've now added in interstitial ads within our application, which is a second way we can earn revenue from AdMob within our apps, such as these simple full screen ads or the banners within the previous tutorial that we learned about. So you can now create free applications, give out your free content, and not worry that you're not making any money because you start to earn revenue from the adverts that you've placed within it. So I'd like to thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys all in the next tutorial. Hey guys, just before you go, I'd like to thank you for watching this tutorial, and if you did enjoy it, make sure you click that big like button down below. And if you'd like to further your knowledge and progress within iOS 9, Xcode 7 for Swift 2 and Objective-C, where you can learn how to create 20 real-life applications, links for these will be below in the description of the video. And if you'd like to learn iOS development on the go, then make sure you check out one of our many iOS applications where you can learn how to create applications again within Objective-C and Swift. The links for these will also be in the description down below. And I'd just like to say one last time, if you did enjoy this video and it did help you out in any way, make sure you hit the big like button down below on the video and make sure you check out our website, geeklimmer.com, where you can find the full source code for this tutorial and all the others we offer. And make sure you like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter so you can keep up to date with what's coming here at Geeklimmer. So once more, let's thank you all for watching and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.